And I'm now delighted to welcome uh, the Right Honourable Dr. Liam Fox, a member of the UK Parliament and former UK Secretary of Defence and Secretary for International Trade, to say a few words. Well, good morning. Uh, it's a privilege and an honour to be with you all today to celebrate the 12th World Down Syndrome Day. This year's theme, With Us Not For Us, thinking about legal capacity and supported decision making is incredibly important. We all expect to be able to make decisions about our lives from where we live and who we live with to what we study and where we work. It is absolutely right that people with Down syndrome are involved in all decisions that affect their lives. And we must all take action to make sure this happens in practice. It can make all the difference when we get it right. When a child is born with an extra copy of their 21st chromosome, they enter a different path in life from the rest of the population. Inevitably, their families too will face different challenges. They will come in the form of medical problems, educational needs, and long-term care challenges. I believe that every individual with Down syndrome has the same right to life, quality of life, dignity, and independence that the rest of us take for granted. I want to tell you a story about a, little, a boy called George, a young man with Down syndrome who lived at home with his family. He expressed interest in moving to supported living once he turned 18. His social worker recognized that whilst it was important to understand his family's thoughts and views, it was paramount that George was included in all decisions. After all, George was soon to be an adult and his voice needed to be the center of any decision-making process. George, however, has limited verbal communication and didn't completely understand what moving out meant. The social worker met with George and his family and teachers to understand how best to support him to communicate his wishes. She used visual images to learn what he understood about the concept of moving out and what a home looked like to him. She visited him regularly at home and at school to discuss this and ensure that his feedback and thoughts were consistent over time. Gathering information from him in his way enabled him to express what was important to him and what his worries were. And through regular contact and communication with George and going over topics such as what it meant to rent a property, his responsibilities to keep a home to a certain standard, and expectations about paying rent, he was assessed as having capacity to understand and commit to a tenancy. He now lives independently in his own home. Without working with George in this way, his voice may not have been heard, and he may not have had the support and opportunity to have been included in decisions about his home. With us, not for us. Now, the United Kingdom has a long-standing tradition of ensuring the rights and liberties of disabled people are protected. We ratified the United Nations Conventions on the Right of Persons with Disabilities in 2019. The Equality Act 2020 protects people from discrimination in the workplace and in wider society. And we also have the Mental Capacity Act, which ensures that every attempt is made to support those uh, in decision-making about their own lives, including those with Down syndrome. In 2021, I had the privilege to introduce to Parliament a Down syndrome bill, which I'm delighted to say became the law in the United Kingdom in April 2022. It is a world first, and my interest in it was personal, political, and professional, as a member of Parliament, as a doctor, and as someone who grew up with the boy next door having Down syndrome. And I've seen clearly that there is much more to do to support people with Down syndrome, to have that independence of decision-making, and much of the impetus for the change that I wanted to see has been driven by improvements in life expectancy. People with Down syndrome are now living into their 70s, and that makes a huge difference because they are the first generation who will outlive their parents with so many consequences. And our legislation, requires the government to produce Down syndrome specific guidance relating to health, social care, education, and housing services. And public authorities, such as hospitals, schools, or social care providers,
cannot ignore this guidance when commissioning and delivering services. The guidance will set out what the unique needs of people with Down syndrome are and what public authorities should be doing to ensure the support needs of people with Down syndrome are met and enable them to live fulfilling lives. And we will share best practice to ensure that professionals understand how to support people with Down syndrome about and help them make the decisions that affect them. In the spirit of with us, not for us, we will work closely with people with Down syndrome, their families and carers, as well as organisations who support them to develop the guidance and make sure it is fit for purpose. There are now so many tools available which can help people with Down syndrome express their views. We have no excuse not to involve people with Down syndrome in decision making about their lives. We have come, as we've heard, a long way in improving the rights and inclusion of people with Down syndrome. But it is clear there is more we can do internationally and within our own nations. It's only by working together that we can make with us, not for us, a reality for all. And what a worthy challenge that is for every one of us. Thank you.